Hey there, this is Lori at LoriRosansky.com. And if you've ever seen others uh, create or post these cool graphics on their uh, social media accounts and was wondering how to go about doing that yourself, then stick around, I may be able to help you. So again, this is Lori Rosansky. And if you don't know me, I help uh, home business owners overcome their technical challenges by showing them simple tools and step-by-step -step instructions of how to implement and leverage things like that into their business. So um, you may be saying to yourself, well, why use images uh, on my social media page? And whether that's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever other social media account that you use. Well, the, the three primary reasons that I feel the images are important is uh, first uh, it gets your audience's attention if you've ever scrolled through I mean if you have a Facebook account you know just by scrolling there's so much information that gets put in front of you on your Facebook account there's no way you could read everything so you're probably scanning like I do and there's probably certain things that either catch your attention or uh, actually get you to stop and look at what they're doing. And usually it's uh, some kind of graphic or some kind of video. And uh, I'll cover videos under a different, um, a different um, post. The second reason you wanna do it is not only to get your audience's attention, but to help your audience remember your message. So for example, if you look at my um, business page, you know, the whole point of my, the, the, the point I want people to remember is that I help business owners bust through their technical challenges so that they can focus on what really matters. And then the third piece for this is brand identity. So when that you hear the when you hear my name, Lori Rosansky, that you envision these pictures. So that's why I use the same picture on a lot of my um, on a lot of my messages that I post, whether it's on my website or on social media, is because I want there to be a consistent image and a, a consistent brand identity of me. So with all that said, um, I'm gonna show you the tool that I use. Uh, it's called Canva. Uh, it's, you can, while there's a paid version of it, I will tell you that I use the free account and I've been using Canva for probably a couple years now. And again, I use this for my website, I've used it for YouTube, I've used it for um, social media, I, I've used it to put an ebook together. So I've used it in a number of different ways. But when you, once you create your account, um, you'll get to this home page, and it'll say create a design. Now, if you're not sure what to use, if you're using a social, if you're doing any kind of social media, uh, it gives you a little bit more um, information on what you can use. So if you, so let me do that again. So when you, where you see create a design, you'll get this, this homepage and all the way over to the right hand side, it'll say more. So if you click the more button, it will recommend for you the maybe posts that you've done more frequently. Obviously, if you're new, it's not gonna show this. But basically what you can do is you can go through this and figure out what you wanna post. So again, there's a category for social media. So it's got Twitter, it's got Pinterest, it's got Facebook. If you're doing a Facebook app, it's different than an Instagram post. So these already have the appropriate size that the image or the post needs to be. You can also do documents, whether you're doing presentations or letter or a resume or a yearbook. There's stuff for blogging in terms of web banner, and then there's marketing materials. So you can kind of go through this and, and pick out what you think you need. For today, I'm gonna to actually do a Facebook post. So uh, you're just gonna go ahead and click the Facebook post. Now it's gonna give you a bunch of different layouts. What you can do is you can pick, if you like one of these, you can pick it and start with that and then change it to whatever you want to change it to. I've used some of these in the past. 
trying to see if there's one that I've used. So I've used this. I've used this around Christmas time. Or you can start. I've also used this one too and modified it for what I need. Um, or you can just start with a blank slate. So what I recommend is if you want to pick a picture that um, you've taken and you want to load, uh, I would recommend that you go under elements. So they have free photos here, grids, frames, the whole bit. So the grid actually um, helps you keep your picture within the size that you're looking for. So if you wanted to post multiple pictures, almost like a, a collage, then what you can do is you can pick a frame like this. Now you go to your um, graphics that you've uploaded, and I've uploaded quite a few, and I'm just gonna pick a couple of pictures just to put them in here to show you how this works. Uh, let's see, I'll do that one, and I'll do the calendar. So as you can see, the picture will be framed within the, the uh, what they call the, uh, the grid that you've selected. Now, if you only have one picture, then you're gonna pick this grid here, and you just click it once, and it snaps to the, to the size of the image that you're going to do. <clears throat> so I'm actually gonna upload a different picture because uh, for this demonstration, I wanna kind of show you what the tool is capable of doing. And again, this is the free version of the tool. So if you have a picture that you want to um, download, you can download it from your iPhone. But my, my pictures right now are, um, my pictures are on a um, drive on my computer. So you're gonna click this button that says upload your own image. Mine are here under download. I'm actually gonna pick, you can't see it from here, but this is actually a picture of my um, RV. So this little green button shows that it's uploading the uh, picture to Canva. And we're gonna give it a minute. This also shows you when it's done. So when this stops with the, the little um, wave motion, then you know that the picture's uploaded. And it's almost done. There you go. So now I can go ahead and use this picture. So if I take the picture and I'm gonna hold down the, um, the, the mouse key and I'm gonna drag it across to over here, and what it will do, it will fit the frame that I have. Makes it nice and easy. Now that I have my frame and I have my picture in place, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some text. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going go to text. And I have large text, small text, and even smaller text. You're gonna just, you can either click it and it'll be added to the site or you can drag it there's a certain spot that you want to put it in. And you'll probably notice this little line, this little uh, dotted line that comes across my screen as I'm trying to, um, I still have my hand on the button for the, for the, the, the text. That line helps you um, uh, line things up appropriately. So when I let it go, this is now centered with the width of the um, of the uh, of the graphic. So if I start typing, let's say I type in, let me pick a color. I'm just going to do yellow, just for something different. And I start typing LoriBrozanski.com. This will start to stretch across however long this text is. So see how it's stretching on both sides. That's so it can keep it centered. So that's that. So that's laurierosansky.com. Now let's say I want to add, um, let's say I'm doing my own quote. So I'm gonna pick this one. 
Mm, maybe I'll put it up here for now. I may change this. Actually, I may do this. I'm going to remove this right now. And I'm going to drag this down here. And the reason I want to do that is so see, you see the three, you see the three lines as it gets um, so it's showing you how it's centering it. So let's say I want to add, now you can change this graphic. So I'm sorry, you can change this text. So up here, when you click on heading, where it says add heading, this is what it's set to. So you can click on here and you can pick different uh, fonts. So let's say I pick Chewy, you'll see how this changes. And let's see, pick a different one just to show you. Um, we'll do Creepster. And again, you'll see how it, whoops, you'll see how it changes. Let me just put some text in here just so you can see it. And I think the reason you're having problems seeing it is because it's a dark color. So let me just put it in yellow so you can see it. There you go. So as you are playing with this, you can go down here and select whatever you want and it will change it appropriately. But remember, this stays center. So as you pull this out, you can then recenter it and it's that little dotted line that shows you it's centered. I'm just going to increase this screen a little more. There. Okay. So let's say here I want to say um, the purpose of life is to be happy. Find the little things you enjoy. Now, obviously, this is too long. So what I would end up doing is probably stretching this out. <clears throat> recentering it. Maybe picking a smaller font. There we go. Let me pick one a little bit bigger. Okay. And I'm going to leave it as that font for the graduate. I kind of like that. Now, there's other things that you can do. There are different backgrounds you can select if you didn't have a photo. Let's say you didn't want to use the photo and you just wanted to pick a background. So I can click on the picture. I can hit my delete button. I can hit, let's say I want to um, move, remove this um, grid. I'm going to hit delete again. Oh, looks like I had some stuff left out there. So I'm going to delete all this stuff. And I'm just clicking on this. I'm clicking on the edge. And then I'm hitting the delete key. And that did not delete. There we go. So let's say I wanted to do a background. I can pick a background. Uh, maybe I'll do this one. Or I could pick a solid background. Or if I want, <clears throat> this is one I use, this one I use on the back of my um, website. But you can poke around. You can actually spend quite a bit of time. So what I would recommend is that you kind of have a game plan for what you want to do before you start doing it. Or um, a, another simple and easy way, if you don't want to spend the time doing this, is you can go to Fiverr and um, somebody can create you a graphic for like five bucks. So, But for those that like to do things themselves, I, I wanted to kind of walk through it. So search, 
let's say you wanted a specific picture. Let's say you wanted to do something on dogs. You can actually scan, you can actually put that in the, the search bar. You click on search, you click on dogs. I hit enter and now it'll show you dogs. Now you can see the photos or you can see illustrations. So that's the difference between the two. So let's say, oh, he's cute. Let's say I want to utilize him. And um, let's say I want to, so when, so what you'll see is when I click on the picture of the dog that I have these little buttons over here. And these buttons are what allows me to resize the image to whatever I want. And then again, by um, holding down my mouse, I'm able to center the picture where I want. So that's telling me that that's centered. Okay. So they have different layouts. So you can use one of Canva's layouts. If you had a team that you were working with, you can look at your designs and everything else. <clears throat> Again, elements. They have all kinds of things. They have frames that if you wanted to use it. Um, let's see. The frame would be something like this, where your picture would go up here and the rest of the frame would be down there. So we're not gonna use that for here. See if they have anything on the outside. I don't really use frames that much. The only one I really use <clears throat> are the grids. The grids I find very helpful. Free photos, their shapes. If I wanted to include a border, let's say I picked a um, background that was a little lighter. Let's say I really like this background for whatever reason, but I can't really see my um, text. One of the things you can do is under elements, under shapes, you can take this little square. I'm going to reposition it so it comes across as a border underneath here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and say arrange, and I want to put this in the back. And what's supposed to happen? Ah, there we go. This way, this background, this frame is now in the back, and my text is in the front. What you can also do, let me pick a different background so you can see it. Uh, let's say, um, let's use. Let's use this. Let me see how this looks. All right. So let's say I actually wanted this background, this blue background, to show as well as through this black. And what I can do is up here, I have a copy button, I have an arrange button that we just went through. You can hit transparency. So this button here. And what you're going to do is you're going to reduce the transparency of the black background. So when you click it again, you'll start to see it. So if I changed it all the way to zero, it's completely transparent. If I did that again, not that one, this one. I'm not getting the right image. Why is that? Oh, because I'm supposed to be here. That's why. And I bring it, let's say I bring it up 25%. See how it's starting to get a little darker? And then if I bring it up to here, it gets a little darker. So if you wanted some of the background of this blue to show, you can actually change the transparency of this border here. 
You can add a link. Um, the links work fairly well. I would not do it in an image because um, a lot of times um, you can't see that link with an image. You can use the link when you're doing when you're saving it as a PDF. So if you were doing a an ebook or you were doing a um, some kind of um, let's say um, some kind of material that you would print as a PDF, that's when you would use that. And then this is your delete button. So if you wanted to delete this, you could. Um, trying to see if there's anything else that I would show you. So we went through text. Again, you can get lost in this. Um, you could easily spend a lot of time depending on how picky you are. Sometimes I'm very picky. But you have lines, you have charts, you have icons. So under icons, you have different graphics there. But most of the time I try to keep it simple. I Usually what I'll do is before I come in here, I'll have a design in mind of what I want to lay out. Now let's say you didn't have this picture, you didn't see any pictures in, um, in Canva that you can use that were free. So let me talk to you about um, three places where you can go get uh, free images. And you wanna be careful, a lot of people will use Google and just Google an image and go ahead and use it. Um, why it may be okay sometimes, um, I would recommend if you take your business seriously that you need to be aware of copyright infringements. And some of the graphics that you use actually have um, uh, prohibit you from using it on the web or on Facebook or anything else. So that's why I want to give you these three websites for you to look for free images. Um, so you're looking for royalty-free images. Um, so one of the ones that I like and is kind of my go-to is uh, Pixabay. Pixabay, you set up an account and it allows you to download free images that you can use um, anywhere you want. Uh, they also encourage you to upload images so that the community can look at it. So again, if I was doing, let's do dogs just to... So they have some through Shutterstock that are paid um, images, but then as you can see, all these are free. This is cute. So if I wanted to download it, I click on the image. And again, this is after you've uh, created an account. You click on free download. I usually pick the 1280 by 720 graphic. And you just hit download. And what you'll see is with, um, I have um, um, the Google, I have Chrome, sorry, I couldn't think of the name. Um, and what it will do, it'll just put an image down here saying that I've downloaded it. Now, if I wanted to, I can go back over to Canva. I can go back to my design, which was here. I wanna replace this dog with the one I just downloaded. So again, I'm gonna to go to uploads. I'm gonna upload my image. Here's the dog that I just downloaded from Pixabay. And while that's loading, I'm gonna show you the other two sites. The other one is Pexels, pretty similar to Pixabay. And again, you can just go ahead and search. They have some different images that you're looking for. And then the last one is, it's called freeimages.com. I will tell you that uh, they do try to upsell you with other images. Um, I believe it's iStock. So um, <clears throat> I gotta be honest, I don't use this site as much. Um, I use it should I need it, but um, most of the time my, my go-to is uh, Pixabay. So going back to my post, that's now uploaded. So now if I wanted to, I could actually fill the screen up on the top. And there you go.
and I can even center this image. And all I'm doing is clicking on the image and I'm actually using my arrow key to move the image over. And there you go. To download the image, to download the image, you have these up here. You can either share it. They have an embed feature. So you have to make it public in order for you to do it. I don't do all this. Basically, I just download it and use it as I need it. So, but you do have a share button. You could order prints if you want. But to download, you're either going to pick JPEG or PNG. I use PNG. That's what's recommended. It makes it nice and easy. PDF is PDF and PDF print are if you're going to, obviously, if you're going to print the PDF or if you're going to use any kind of standard PDF, then you can use this. Standard should work fine. But for your images, use the PMG, hit download, and it'll say hold tight. Now, I had a background. So this wall background um, has a one-time use or has a multi-use, and depending on what you're going to use. So if I was just using it one time, I would do the one-time use and pay the dollar. But because I'm not really going to use it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of it. And then I'll recenter this graph. There we go. Not too bad for something that I threw together. And I think I'll make this just a little darker. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit download. I'm going to use the PNG with, or JPEG. Either one works. It's going to download it. And now, so this has now saved it on under my downloads. So if I look at my, my PC and I go under my, I'll call it my libraries, under downloads is where I'll find this image. And now what I can do is I can go over to Facebook. Let's go to Facebook. I will go to, let me go to one of my pages. I'm going to go to this one because I don't use it as often anymore. <laughs> and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my photo icon. I'll go back to downloads where the picture is. Actually, it's in there now. And I am going to pick it. Click open. And I'm going to put, let's see. Um, it's amazing what you can do with Canva. And I can hit publish. Now, if you were on your personal page, um, you don't have the option to hit publish its, uh, its post. Uh, if you have a fan page, a, or a business page, the business page on, on Facebook allows you to schedule posts if you'd like to. So um, that's it. Uh, it's literally that simple. So um, again, it's Pixabay. Let me just move this over and shut this down. So it's Pixabay, P-I-X-A Bay. Pexels, and this is free freeimage.com. So I hope you got value from that today. Uh, if you did, uh, post something in the group and let me know that uh, you got some value. And if you need any help, send me a private message and I'll be happy to uh, respond.